Relationships are complicated, right? But some relationships are far more twisted and layered than others, especially when lies, manipulation, and public narratives collide. Gypsy Rose Blunted's marriage to Ryan Anderson is one of those relationships where no matter how much we peel back the layers, it seems like we are always left with more questions than answers. But here's the thing, Gypsy isn't the victim she tries to portray herself as. She is clever, manipulative, and frankly, very good at using people to serve her own needs. And today we are going to take a deep dive into this story exposing the lies and hypocrisy that have been hidden behind the polished interviews and social media performances. We'll also touch into the external influences in her life, particularly Christy Blanchard and Ken Acker who have played a huge role in Gypsy's decisions, including her divorce from Ryan. We'll go through her own words from live sessions, explore Ryan's frustrations and connect the dots that Gypsy would prefer we overlook. So let's get started because there's a lot more to this story than meet the eye. Let's begin with Gypsy's first comments about the breakup. She's been vocal about how hard it was for her, about the emotional toll it took, but when you listen closely, you'll notice that something just doesn't add up. It's like she's trying a little too hard to convince everyone that she didn't want to hurt Ryan. In one of her TikTok lives, Gypsy says, So, I mean, that was never my intention for him at all. It hurt me too. A divorce is really, really difficult. So, it's like I was battling both emotions. I was heartbroken for Ryan and also heartbroken having to basically say goodbye to a best friend that I had for three years. Now, on the surface, this sounds like someone who's genuinely upset about the end of her marriage. She talks about Ryan like he was her best friend, someone she confided in, someone who knew all her secrets. But here's the thing. If Ryan was really so important to her, why did she move on so quickly with Ken Aka, her so-called first love, while still being married to Ryan? Gypsy goes on to say, Regardless of that, our marriage didn't work out. Ryan was my best friend for three years. To have to cut that off and say goodbye is really hard. So, I mean, I never enjoyed causing Ryan pain, ever, at all. That was never my intention for him at all. Thank you, Selena, for the galaxy. That was never my intention was to hurt him. And as you can see, it hurt me too. Like a divorce is really, really difficult. Um, so it's like I was, I was battling both emotions. I was heartbroken for Ryan and also heartbroken, like having to basically say to goodbye to a best friend that I had for three years. Um, you know, regardless of that our marriage didn't work out, um, Ryan was my best friend for three years. I told him everything. He knew all of my secrets. He knew so much about me. And to have to like cut that off and say goodbye is really hard. But was it really hard for her? Because she was just dealing with the loss of a friend. She was juggling a rekindled relationship with Ken at the same time. While she's painting this picture of being heartbroken, she's also reconnecting with another man. Does that really sound like someone who's heartbroken? or someone who's calculated in her next move. Now, let's talk about Ken Aka. Gypsy describes him as her first love, someone she was reconnecting with while still married to Ryan. This part of the story is important because it reveals a lot about Gypsy's character and her ability to manipulate situations to her advantage. She says, At the same time, I was also reconnecting with my first love, which has always been Ken. And so that was a battling emotion for me. At the same time, I was also reconnecting with my first love, which has always been Ken. And so that was a battling emotion for me. Um, <laughs> a battling emotion? Really? Gypsy? Because from where I'm standing, it looks less like a battle and more like a calculated move to transition from one relationship to the next. Gypsy frames this as if she's caught in an emotional tug of war, torn between two men. But let's not forget that she was still married to Ryan when all of this was happening. While Ryan was probably trying to figure out what went wrong, Gypsy had already moved on emotionally. If not physically, she knew exactly what she was doing. And then there's a question of paternity, which brings us to one of the most revealing parts of this entire saga. When Gypsy starts talking about paternity of her child, the cracks in her story will start to show. During one of her lives, she says, 
And the truth is, I am not 100% sure on that. I've asked my divorce attorney and what I gather from everything is that if Ryan is kind and will allow us to go ahead and put the baby's name down as Akka, that could be a possibility. Are people asking, uh, will the baby have, um, hold up one second. Do you have any crazy pregnancy cravings? Um, no, not, not anything crazy. Like, I, I want sweets, like cakes, cupcakes, icing. Like, I want sweets. But I, I take my time with that stuff. I'll eat one little sweet and then, like, I won't go crazy with it. That's, <clears throat> that's as much as, as I, I allow myself to eat sweets. Um, so I see people asking, uh, will the baby have uh, Ken's last name or will it be a Blanchard? Will it be an Anderson? Will it be a Euchre? Um, and the truth is, I am not 100% sure on that. I've asked my divorce attorney and, you know, what I gather from everything is that if Ryan is, if Ryan is kind and will allow us to go ahead and put the baby's name down as Euchre, um, that could be a possibility. But if, if Ryan wants to fight it, then it makes it really hard. Ryan knows he's not the father um, because I got pregnant during Jazz Fest weekend. And I had already been away from Ryan and not been intimate with him after leaving. So um, I don't see him putting up a fight for the baby because in, like, he knows it's not his. This is where things get messy. Gypsy is trying to play both sides here, acting as if she's uncertain about the situation while steadily pushing the narrative that Ryan isn't the father. She even admits that the baby was conceived during Jazz Fest weekend, long after she and Ryan had stopped being intimate. But here's the kicker. Even though she says Ryan knows he's not the father, she still talks about how if Ryan wants to fight it, then it makes it really hard. This is classic gypsy, keeping the door open just enough to create confusion, but not enough to take full accountability. She's always positioning herself in a way that benefits her, never fully committing to one story because it's easier to manipulate people when the truth is vague. Ryan has been through the ringer with gypsy, and his live sessions reveal just how deeply her manipulation runs. In one of his TikTok lives, he says, you know, somebody did say something to me that, you know, the only two people that can affect your marriage are the two people in it. I do agree with that to some extent, but me knowing Gypsy like I know Gypsy, you know, they played on her. Clear from Ryan's comments is that Gypsy isn't as innocent as she likes to portray herself. He knows that she's easily influenced by the people around her, people like Christy Blanchard and Ken Acker. And the worst part, Gypsy lets herself be influenced because it serves her own agenda. She's always looking out for herself first. And Ryan was just another pawn in her game. Ryan goes on to say, Gypsy can be influenced so much somewhat, you know, Gypsy is trying to figure out life, so she listens to people she trusts. But I'm not going there. Good for her. Um, you know, somebody did say something to me that, uh, you know, the only two people that can affect your marriage are the two people in it. I do agree to that to some, some extent. Uh, but me knowing Gypsy like I know Gypsy, you know, they, they played on her. They played on her emotions. Gypsy, Gypsy's, uh, can be influenced so much. Some, somewhat, you know, Gypsy's trying to figure life out, so she listens to people she should trust. She trusts. Oh, sorry about that screen. I actually hit a button. So she listens to people that she has, thinks has her best interests at heart. But I'm not going to go there. Like, good for her. This is where Ryan's frustrations really shines through. He's trying to move on, but it's clear that he's still grappling with the fact that Gypsy isn't who she pretended to be. She's not this fragile, broken woman who needs saving. She's manipulative and she knows how to use the people around her to get what she wants. Here's where things take a darker turn. Ryan reveals that it wasn't just Gypsy making decisions about their marriage. Her stepmother, Christy Blanchard and Ken Aka had a lot to do with it. In one of his lives, Ryan says, I am mad at Ken. He used Christy to get to steal my wife. They knew exactly what they were doing. This paints a picture of Gypsy being manipulated by Christy and Ken, both of whom pushed her towards divorcing Ryan. Ryan doesn't see this as Gypsy's decision alone. He believes that Christy and Ken orchestrated the entire thing to get him out of the picture. Ryan continues, Christy called the divorce attorney. Christy went with her, forced her to go, and Ken went with her to the divorce attorney. Did she really do it by herself? 
or was she kind of pushed into it? This is where Gypsy's narrative of being an independent woman falls apart. She claims that divorcing Ryan was the first independent thing she did. But how independent can you really be when you're being guided by others? One of the most telling moments in Gypsy's live session is when she reflects on an argument she had with Ryan. In a rare moment of honesty, she admits that she can be reactive and emotionally driven. She says, I am learning that I could be very reactive to situations. In the episode that I yelled at Ryan and I was like, I don't care, you know, I could have handled that a little better. On the surface, this seems like a moment of self-reflection, but when you dig a little deeper, it's clear that Gypsy is trying to soften her image. She's framing this as a learning experience, but the reality is that she knew exactly what she was doing. She's not just some innocent woman who lashes out in the heat of the moment. She's calculated. Gypsy goes on to say, I could have taken a deep breath, calmly said, I understand where you're coming from. And I understand that we had $6,000 in the TikTok creator fund at that time. But for me, my feelings got hurt when he said that because I took it as you are patronizing social media over your wife. And so I kind of snapped at him. There are things that I wish I would have done differently. Um, I'm learning that I could be very reactive to situations. And so um, in the episode that I yelled at Ryan and I was like, I don't care. You know, I could have handled that a little better. I could have took a deep breath, calmly said, you know, I understand where you're coming from and I understand that, you know, we had $6,000 in the TikTok creator fund at the time and I would have had to wait an, a month for that to be sent to our bank. Um, but for me, my main concern was just sticking to what my my parole officer told me and so for me my feelings got hurt when he said that because i took it as you are prioritizing social media over your wife this is where we see gypsy's true colors she's always quick to point out her feelings got hurt but she never stops to consider how her actions affected ryan she talks about how she snapped at him but there is no real accountability here it's always framed as something that happened to her, not something she did. Let's not forget about Ken Aka, who plays a significant role in all of this. Gypsy has made it clear that Ken is her first love, and his involvement in her life has only added fuel to the fire. In one of her lives, she talks about how Ken reacted when she saw a text from Ryan. She says, and I handed Ken my phone. He read the text and Ken got a little upset because Ryan was out of pocket. He was being aggressive. It got aggressive back and forth and an argument. Once Ken cooled down, he's like, I shouldn't have all that stuff. And I was like, it's okay. You were upset. You were being protective over me. And I handed Ken my phone. He read the text and Ken got a little upset because Ryan was out of pocket. He was being aggressive. And so emotions got the better of Ken and he started texting Ryan. It got aggressive back and forth in an argument. Once Ken cooled down, he's like, I shouldn't have said all that stuff. And I was like, it's okay. You were upset. You were being protective over me. I get it. And I blocked Ryan's number. So I, at least it was another fake number that he creates to call me or text me. So that's what really went down last night. And I just feel like if he got to speak his piece last night on the situation because he did acknowledge it, I can too. What's interesting here is how Gypsy downplays the whole situation. She talks about how Ken was just being protective, but in reality, this was another example of how she manipulates the people around her. Ken got upset because Gypsy let him get upset. She could have handled the situation differently, but instead, she allowed it to escalate because it benefited her narrative. And Ryan, well, he's not too fond of Ken. To say the least, in one of his TikTok lives, Ryan says, I am mad at Ken. He used Christy to get to steal my wife. Yeah, I am mad at Ken too. He knew it. Those two knew exactly what they were doing. They played that out. They knew damn well what they were doing. I am mad at Ken. He used uh, he used Christy to get to steal my wife. Yeah, I'm mad at Ken too. He knew it. He, them both two, those two knew exactly what they were doing. They planned that out. They knew damn well what they were doing. That's low. 
I called him a coward on a text one time because he, he's a coward. Who does that? Who does that? I'm going to get the stepmom to manipulate her and get her to leave. I mean, whatever, dude. So you guys, I'm not going to talk bad about Gypsy. Let it go, dude. I'm trying. That's why I'm going out tonight. Ryan's anger is palpable here. It's hard not to sympathize with him. He feels like he was manipulated not just by Gypsy, but by Ken, Christy as well. And honestly, he has every right to feel that way. Gypsy's actions, along with the influence of the people around her, played a significant role in the downfall of their marriage. One of the most confusing aspects of Gypsy's story is her pregnancy. Ryan has admitted to being unsure about whether Gypsy's claims are even true. In one of his live sessions, he says, Yeah guys, about the pregnancy test thing that you all saw today, I don't know if that's true. Like, if it is, I don't even know what to say about that. The movie was great. I am the sweetest. Yeah. Guys, about the pregnancy test thing that y'all saw today, you know, I, I don't know if that's true. If it is, I, I don't even know what to say about that. Like, if it's not true, then, you know, I hope it's not true. I hope. But if it is, I can't do anything about it. Uh, thank you for Nina. Thank you for the lightning bolt. This level of uncertainty highlights just how deep Gypsy's manipulations run. Even Ryan, who was married to her, can't tell whether or not she's being truthful. And this isn't the first time Ryan has expressed a doubt about Gypsy's pregnancy. In another life, he mentions, Guys, I haven't really talked about the pregnancy much. I have thoughts on it. It's been confusing. I don't really talk about it because I don't know what to think about certain things. Uh... Guys, I haven't really talked about the pregnancy much. I uh, have thoughts on it. You know, like, it's been confusing. I don't, I don't really talk about it because I don't know what to think about certain things. Uh, I love I love these comments. Where's my sweat towel? Yeah, it's at your mama's house. Oh! <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I saw... How many of y'all saw that uh, pop culture ringtone thing that that dude did where I'm like doing this and throwing punches that was hilarious Ryan's confusion is understandable Gypsy has been sending mixed signals about her pregnancy from the start leaving even those closest to her unsure of what to believe and while Ryan may have his doubts he is still emotionally invested in the situation which makes this whole ordeal even more heartbreaking for him Despite everything that's happened, Ryan still holds on to some complicated feelings for Gypsy. In one of his lives, he says, I am mad at Gypsy. Guys, I've gone through every stage of the grief process, you know? I still have a lot of love and respect for Gypsy. I am not going to talk bad about her. Let's see. Are you mad at Gypsy? Am I mad at Gypsy? Hmm. Guys, I've gone through every stage of the grief process. Um, you know, I still have a lot of love and respect for Gypsy. I'm not going to talk bad about Gypsy. Like that video I did the other day, I was mad. I'm not going to lie. I was really mad. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I saw somebody sent me a picture of, uh, not somebody sent me a picture. I saw a clip of the pregnancy test that Gypsy put on her Instagram, but then deleted her Instagram and then said it was hacked. So you never know with Gypsy, honestly, you never know. So, uh, if she is pregnant, I wish her the best, you know, like I have massive love for that girl and I still care about her. It is what it is like, but I'm trying to move on with my life. Uh, it's clear that Ryan is struggling to move on. He's caught between his love for Gypsy and the reality of who she is. He's been hurt, manipulated and lied to, but he still can't fully let go. This is what makes their relationship so toxic. Ryan is stuck in this emotional limbo, unable to move on because of the hold Gypsy still has over him. And Gypsy? Well, she's moved on, at least publicly. But her actions, her constant need to keep Ryan in the orbit, even while she's with Ken, suggests that she hasn't really moved on either. She's still playing the same game, manipulating the people around her to serve her own needs. As we dive deeper into the layers of Gypsy Rose Blanchard's lies, 
it becomes clear that her manipulation runs far deeper than the public sees. From her shifting the narratives about the breakup with Ryan to her rekindled romance with Ken, Gypsy has been carefully crafting a version of events that keeps people guessing and confused. Her ability to maintain control even when the truth starts to unravel, shows just how dangerous her lies can be. Ryan Anderson's journey in this story is equally heartbreaking. He is a man who has been manipulated and emotionally tethered to someone who continues to use him even after the relationship ended. And as Gypsy navigates her public life with Ken by her side, Ryan is left to question everything that's happened, including whether or not he was ever truly a part of her life or just another pawn in her twisted game. The deeper we look into Gypsy Rose Blanchard's lies, the more disturbing the truth becomes.